Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to cover the three key steps to positioning your B2B SaaS product effectively so it sells itself. And this meme that you see on the screen right now is how your customers would look like if you implement the strategies I'm about to show you in your SaaS business. So my name is Daniel Grinchman and I build end-to-end -end customer acquisition systems for early stage B2B SaaS companies. And over the last few years, I helped several B2B SaaS founders go from one to two calls a month from their network and referrals to consistently generating three to 10 calls a week with their ideal target prospects. And if it wasn't for the positioning secrets I uncovered during this time, we would never have achieved these results. So listen carefully and implement the strategies in your business so you can replicate our success. But first, let's cover what is SaaS positioning and why it's so important. Essentially, positioning is an act of deciding where and how your product fits in the current marketplace and why it is better than other alternatives. And if you cannot clearly showcase how your product is better or different, in one to two sentences, then no prospect will give you the time of the day to see the product or explore your solution on their own. Your prospects are bombarded with messages every day, offering to try out different tools and solutions. And unless your message stands out in their inbox or in their feed, there's practically zero chance they'll choose to explore your solution now or at a later point. So how can we position your B2B SaaS product effectively to increase your response rates, to shorten your sales cycle, to get you more customers, and all of this while reducing the overall customer acquisition uh, costs. There are three steps to doing this. Step number one is to use niche-specific messaging. Let's give this a definition. A niche is a specific group of people with a specific problem and a desired solution. And your goal uh, is to get uh, them, basically get your niche, from their current situation to, the, to their desired situation using your SaaS solution. So let's say you have a product that can solve multiple problems for multiple different niches, or let's say one problem for multiple different niches, doesn't matter. Your prospects in niche number one don't care about the results you uh, got for niche number two. As founders, we get attached to uh, our product, to our solution, and we think it's the best solution on earth, but prospects do not know this and do not care as much about this. So let's imagine there are two different niches you can offer your solutions to. So let's say you can uh, offer it to solar or you can offer this to e-com brands. But here's the thing, your prospects in solar do not care about the results you got for e-com brands. They only care about the results it can get them and if it got results for people like them. So if you use generic messaging in your ads or in your outreach campaigns, it's time to rework your value proposition for this niche. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine you run a SaaS that helps companies get more reviews on third-party review platforms like Trustpilot or Reviews.io. Uh, you can reach out to potential customers with something like this. Say you send them an email like, hey, Bob, we help companies like yours get more reviews on third party review platforms by segmenting their customers and sending them personalized review invitation campaigns. Now, is this a bad message? Not necessarily. Like you mentioned that uh, basically the, the general value problem there that you help them get more reviews, uh, basically. And you mentioned how, how you do it by segmenting the customers basically the features, segmenting the customers and sending personalized review invitation campaigns. Is this decent? Probably slightly less than decent. But, uh, and like, can this still work? Yes, if you send a lot more volume, if you send a lot of volume, this can work. But let's see how we can send less volume and make this work a lot better. Very simple hack. And only thing you need to do for this is basically to rewrite your value prop for the niche you're reaching out to. So let me show you two examples. Basically, you can reach out with generic messaging like this, or let's imagine your solution, uh, basically you cater it to the specific niche, in this case, D2C e-commerce. You can reach out with something like this. We help D2C e-commerce brands like company name, get 10 to 30% more positive reviews on platforms like Trustpilot in, in just 90 days without the need to pay for their premium plan. 
Or you can say, basically, uh, we help D2C e-commerce brands, like company name. Basic, uh, you say the exactly same thing and just describe instead of without what they don't want, you just say by segmenting their best customers and sending them personalized review invitation campaigns that uh, Trustpilot doesn't offer. Now, compare this to the message above. What are the elements like that, uh, that, uh, that are different? So instead of just mentioning companies, we mentioned specific niche, D2C e-commerce brands. We mentioned also the company name. Instead of uh, just saying get more reviews, we just say we give a specific number, 10 to 30% more positive reviews. Instead of uh, just saying third-party review platforms, we mentioned like what? And if you got if, uh, uh, the data of this customer, basically, you know they are using, they are on Trustpilot and they use Trustpilot. If you mention this, do you think this will get a better response rate and better interest rate and better call booking rate for, uh, for the end than the above message? Like just compare this to this one is pretty generic. It just shares a couple of features. This one focuses on specifics and the specifics is what make this work. Essentially, do you see how making your message more specific can get you better results? If you do, then let's go to the next point, which is apart from optimizing your campaign messaging, I would go as far as creating dedicated landing pages for that niche or optimizing your homepage to match the campaign messaging if you're going all in on testing one niche, which isn't a bad idea in the beginning. Now, let's look at, uh, I, sh I showed you here the example of a campaign messaging. Now, let's uh, give some more examples of basically the landing pages. So let's say you run a SaaS uh, that provides a customer portal for solar companies. And you decided to reach out to them via cold email and maybe even running some ads. Now, I want you to imagine uh, right now that you are a decision maker in a solar company. And the first thing you see, uh, basically, the first thing you saw was one of these two pages. Question, which one would resonate with you more? Variant number one or variant number two? Let's go back. Variant number one, customer tracking communications reimagined, inform customers, uh, happy customers, all-in-one experience platform versus option number two. Reduce solar cancellations, lower support costs, and streamline customer communications through a simple customer portal. Which one would resonate to you more? Which one are you more likely to respond to and book a demo with? Essentially, what I'm getting towards is relevance is key. And how niche specific is your messaging affects what kind of results you get from your lead generation campaigns, no matter the channel. If you want better results, you want to make your message niche specific. Cool. Well, let's go to step number two. Step number two, offer something they want but don't have. I'm going to start this uh, section uh, from a quote from uh, Robert Collier, which is one of the uh, most famous copywriters on the planet. <laughs> you want to always enter the conversation already taking place in the customer's mind. Here's what you need to know. Your customers already are using basically uh, alternative solutions. They are already using alternative solutions. It can be from your direct competitors, like other software uh, tools, or it can be from your indirect competitors, like doing it manually or using old tech like Excel. And your goal is to find out what solutions they're already using, what they like and don't like about those solutions, and find gaps that your solutions can fill, that your solution can fill. And the best way to do this is by talking to your customers and users, uh, see uh, what people say in niche communities, and also look up bad reviews on websites like G2, Captera, uh, and others to find a gap that your product can fill. Let me show you an example. Here's a bad review we found online on Google Forms. And here is how one of our partners used it to promote their SaaS as a better alternative. They created a blog post for that and addressed basically the points of this and other reviews to showcase blog survey as a better solution. Here's another uh, bad review we found online, this time from Typeform, basically another paid tool. You can see major problems with form crashing being wiped out, suddenly functioning incorrectly, da -da -da, um, wiped out, data gone, etc. 
Carousel Block Survey used it to differentiate their SaaS in a visual form. Now, every time when you could basically when you find those gaps and uh, you clearly showcase this, basically, be it in a blog post, be it in a comparison page, uh, basically by creating an asset, each time uh, you do this, uh, you're creating an asset for yourself that helps you sell your product better, be it while you sleep or when you're talking to customers uh, at the same time. So people might have, like, always there will be a question, why should I use your SaaS tool as opposed to uh, using your competitor or using free options or not using anything at all, not changing the way I do this. And you need to have answers for this. If you do not have answers for this, no wonder your sales suck. You need to have answers. And the more assets you create around this, basically like comparison pages, like a blog post, uh, the faster people can find those assets themselves. Or let's say if they ask you a question, why should they use you versus like an alternative, you can just send them this, uh, send them this asset and they'll just be sold there instead of you trying to convince them and come up with uh, like improvisation of the spot, which would not be as good as if you dedicated some time to creating those assets. Cool. So now hopefully you understand what is the value of digging deep, understanding basically what they want, but don't currently have and creating assets around this. Now that you understand this, let me give you some pro tips. So pro tip number one is you want to showcase your product uh how your product compares to alternatives on your website and on your landing pages so for example here's what we use uh, with stack to uh differentiate them from trustpilot or Viz.io. basically uh can be something as simple as this that you can put on your uh, landing page or home page or let's say if you're more if you already have this and you're more uh advanced what you can do is you can create comparison pages like ClickUp does for each and every competitor you have, both for SEO traffic as well as to send your target uh, prospects. So here's here's an example. Get everything to do is has and much more. Here's how ClickUp differentiates themselves from Todoist. Again, very very simple things, but a lot of SaaS founders just skip this step. So showcase the difference. Pro tip number two is to uh, get your customers to share the word for you. Again, here's how Blockservy leverages this. They got their customers to share the word why Blockservy is a better alternative to Google Forms and Typeform. And right now, every time a new person sees this, basically on the website, on the landing page, basically in some social content, uh, we don't need to convince them because other people did it for us. And therefore, they're, more, much, they're already in their mind becoming more sold on the product. So they'll either sign up themselves, book a demo themselves, or they would need just a less of a, a proactive push from us because uh, they like they see other people getting success with this. Cool. Do you see how knowing uh, the alternative solutions your prospects use and finding the gap your product solves can help you position your product as a superior option? If you don't, rewatch the section. If you do, let's go further. Basically, by offering your target uh, customers something they want but don't have, you're positioning your product as a better option for them. You need to know this. You need to basically, you need to know this. You need to create this assets if you want your product to sell itself. Cool. Onward. Step number three. You want to find your unique messaging angle. When you optimize your messaging, don't expect to get it right the first time. Instead, come up with several new variations and test them against each other until you find the winner. If you want to increase your success rate, you need to double your fa uh, failure rate. This is a quote directly from Thomas J. Watson, who is the former CEO of IBM, who uh, helped grow the company in its glory days. And if he says this, then you and I, we both should listen to him. So if you want to grow, of course. Now, let me show you a personal example. Here's an example of one of our cold outreach campaigns, cold email campaigns that we run for, uh, for one of our B2B SaaS partners. We test several variations in each email in the sequence and compare them against each other. Now, uh, this is a new campaign. Basically, we only sent uh, it to 3,000 unique people, but already you can see the difference between the variants, basically the, the opportunities that we get here. So some of them, for example, here generated four, here generated only two. Here in step two, the first email generated like eight opportunities, while the other generated zero. Now, of course, 
let's say as we get more traffic towards this there will be bigger discrepancy in the numbers but i want to show you basically that uh you need to be testing this even if you are sure uh of what what you think will be the best variant test this and let the data show you and let's uh let's say uh okay you, you let's say you don't run cold outreach campaigns so it's not really applies to you and you primarily use ads to acquire clients so let me show you an ads example we use basically with uh, another one of our partners. So you can really see how we can test this on the paid ad side as well. Essentially, what we're doing is uh, we're doing the same exact thing with paid advertising campaigns. We test the most important variables against each other to generate highest quality leads for the lowest cost. Here's an example from the Google Ads dashboard. We test them in different ad groups. Here you can see that different ad groups have different interaction rates, i.e. click-through rates, like one has 14, one has six, one has 40, basically for, uh, 41.7. Um, and the cost per conversion is also different. Some are basically 48, some are 85, some are 21, and conversion rate as well. And unless we test this, we cannot know where should we invest uh, more of our money to get more results back, basically, to get more leads, more sales, essentially to grow our MRR faster. So again, to recap this, even if you are sure which messaging variation will perform better, just trust the process. Come up with other variations and test them against each other and let the data speak for itself. What you think is best may not necessarily be the best. And you need to accept this if you want to grow. Come up with more variations and test them faster, faster, faster. Send more emails, run more ads, test the variations, and then uh, you'll find the ones that work. Cool. So now you know the three key steps to position your B2B SaaS uh, effectively so it sells itself. And if you got value out of this video and want to see more breakdowns like this, then like, subscribe, and drop a comment below because I plan to release more of those in the coming weeks. And if you want to see how to apply the strategies to start generating uh, leads for your B2B uh, SaaS business and also generating clients uh, using cold email, watch this next recommended video on the screen and it will walk you through how to set up a cold email infrastructure in your SaaS business. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I have. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon. Cheers.